The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents... This is your FBI. This is your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. A-H-O. A-H-O. All over America, thousands of families now own their homes free and clear because they found out the meaning of the letters A-H-O. They stand for Assured Home Ownership, a money-saving, home-saving plan created by the Equitable Life Assurance Society. This plan combines a low-cost first mortgage with life insurance protection. In just 14 minutes... The Equitable Society will give you further information. Please listen carefully for more details on this ideal plan for homeowners offered by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Tonight's FBI file, The Swampland Fugitive. The number of criminals in this country is constantly increasing. And it climbs so fast that it is impossible to bring you an up-to-the-minute count. For instance, even as you sit listening to this program, a major crime is being committed somewhere. In a few seconds, still another major crime will have been committed. And the great probability is that at least one of those crimes will be committed by a person with a previous arrest record. For more than half of those people arrested last year proved to have been more than mere novices. The fact that many of these people with records were free to commit another illegal act is due to an over-leniency on the part of many local parole boards. An over-leniency that adds considerably to the job not only of your FBI, but also of your state and municipal law enforcement agencies. Another contributing factor to making their job the difficult one, and nothing can be done about this, is the fact that crime knows no geography. It can happen anywhere, in the heart of a big city, or, as in tonight's case from the files of your FBI, in a desolate wilderness. Tonight's file opens in the middle of the swamp country. It is early evening, and a small group of men is being led through the marshes by bloodhounds who are straining at their leashes. The dog head toward a small frame house on still. And one of the men in the party makes his way to the front door. I'm sorry to bother you, Miss Jackson. That's all right. We're checking on a dangerous convict who escaped a little while ago. I know. You do? How? You're late. He's been here? And gone. Where? An hour ago. Oh. He took my dinner. Uh, where'd he go? Don't know. Did he take anything else? Will's little boat and outboard motor. Oh, uh, where is Will? Not home yet. When's he due back? Later. Well, uh, uh, maybe he'll see the prisoner down creek. Maybe. If he does, he'll recognize his own boat. Order. Uh, 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 do me a favor, will you, Miss Jackson? What? If he comes back this way, call the sheriff. Glad to. Thanks. Good night. Night, Mr. Hill. Still, we are. I still got strength enough to shoot this gun. I got it. <laughs> In a small office located at the edge of the swamp, FBI Special Agent Jim Taylor is approaching the desk of Sheriff Tom Leonard. Sheriff Leonard? That's right. 
Jim Taylor, FBI. Oh, yes, Jim. Any word yet on Paul Rutledge? Not yet, but we got searching parties covering everything of the swamp. And if he's still in it, we might find him. How'd he get away this time? Now, one of my men arrested him at a local saloon last night. Mm-hmm. We knew he was dangerous, so we didn't want to keep him here in our little jail. We decided to put him in the state pen till you came to get him. Well, what went wrong? Well, the deputy who was going to take him relaxed for a minute. Rutledge grabbed the gun out of the deputy's holster. Did Rutledge shoot him? Yeah. Wounded him critically. He's in the hospital now. Uh, well, then what? He took the car the deputy was going to use and escape. We recovered the car a little while ago. Oh, where? A little way from here, where the road into the swamps comes to an end. Mm. That's why we're pretty sure he's in there. Your deputy isn't the first man to be shot by Rutledge. Yeah, I know. Did you recover the deputy's gun, sir? No. Rutledge must still have that with him. Oh. How about ammunition? He took the deputy's belt with 24 rounds on it. Well, that's going to make him a little harder to take. Yeah, I'm afraid so. Have you had any leads on him at all? Uh, just one. Oh, what's that? Uh, one of the posse saw something move quite a way down the creek. They fired at it and made their way down to see what it was. And? When they got to the spot, they found blood stains. You think they wounded Rutledge? Yeah. They came back and got bloodhounds. They're out with them now. When do you think you'll hear from them again? Oh, maybe any minute now. As mm-hmm. soon as we do, we can start giving them a hand. <laughs> Still here. Mm. Take this soup. Huh? Soup. Take some. You're the woman. Uh... Yep. <laughs> what happened? You passed out. Huh? What about that posse? They went long ago. Now take some soup. Thanks. You got a phone here. Yep. Why didn't you call the posse back? Decided not to. Why? I tended that wound of yours, put a clean cloth on it. That don't answer my question. Why didn't you call? Because I want you to get away. You're on my side? I'm on anybody's side who can get out of here. Oh. You ever live in a swamp? No. You wouldn't know what it's like, then. How long you been here? Since the day Will and me got married. Over 20 years. It's a long stretch. Wasn't so bad at first. Things were new to me then. But year after year, seeing the same things. Hearing the same thing, doing the same thing, I hate it. Why don't you get out? Where would I go? Look, lady, maybe I can get you out of here. What? Maybe I can make a deal with you. What are you saying? If I can get out of this swamp, I'm in the clear... I can head for one of those big cities up north. You know these swamps, don't you? Sure. You know all the paths and creeks? That's right. And here's my proposition. You come with me. Lead me out of this swamp and I'll take you along up north. Oh. How's it sound to you? I... Uh, up north. What? I... That's my husband's boat. Yeah? It's Will. He's coming home. Hey, yeah. I better do something. Where can I go? What? I don't want any more trouble. Where can I hide so he don't see me? There's a lean to uh, back. Go out there. I'll come back later. 
Stop anything and come in a little while. One thing, Jim. Oh, what's that? A deputy with one of the posses called in. Said they went to the cabin of a man named Will Jackson. Hmm. They interviewed Mrs. Jackson, and she told them they missed Rutledge there by an hour. Did she know where he went? Well, the story she told is that he took her husband's outboard motor in his small boat. Uh Uh-huh. Well, the posse found the boat a little while ago. Oh, where? It was tied up outside a cabin of a man named Douglas. He says he borrowed the boat from Mrs. Jackson's husband two days ago. Oh. You think this Douglas might be hiding Rutledge? Oh, no. I grew up with him, Jim. He's as honest as any man in the county. Uh Well, how about this woman, then? Well, she's lived here with old Will Jackson for a long time. There's never been any word against her. What does uh, Jackson do? He's a fishing guide. Do you think it's possible that Rutledge might steal a boat and not have the owner miss it for a while? Not likely, no. The folks around here know every boat in the swamp. And who owns it? If they were to see a stranger in a boat they knew, they'd call us first thing. Oh, I see. Well, there's only one thing left for us to do, Sheriff. Now, Rutledge is known to have been at the Jackson cabin, right? Uh, that's correct. Then that's the last place we know anything about for sure. Let's check out there and see if we can find any leads the posse might have overlooked. Is that you, Will? Yeah. Where you been? Outside. You cut your motor five minutes ago. I used the searchlight. What for? Looked around under the house. A dangerous criminal escaped Elizabeth. Was supposed to be headed this way. He's been here. In the house? Yes. When? An hour ago. Posse was here, too. When? After he went. Did he stay long? No. It's for us. I'll get it. Hello? Yep. Yep. Uh huh. Dick? No. I'll find out. Yep. Uh huh. Bye. Elizabeth, uh, that was the man from the FBI. He said you told the posse the man took my other boot. Did you? Yes. Why? He did. He couldn't have. Lent it to Jean Douglas two days ago. Oh. You knew that, Elizabeth. You was here when Jean came for it. You was standing right there. Why'd you tell the posse a tale? Guess I was mixed up. What mixed you up? Thought Jean was bringing back the boat, not taking it. You went and got him a can of gas, Elizabeth. What'd he need the gas for if he were bringing it back? I'd better call the FBI man back. What for? He said he wanted to know how come you said what you did. What you gonna tell him? Nothing. Then why are you calling? So you can tell him your stuff. Don't pick up that phone. Huh? I got a gun here, mister. Just stay put. You're the one they're looking for. Yeah, that's right. Elizabeth, you knew he was here, didn't you? Sure she did. She fixed this bandage. Elizabeth, why'd you do this? I'm going away with him, Will. What? I'm leaving here. Elizabeth. Don't get upset, mister. You're coming with us. What? He's taking us out of the swamps. In his boat. We will return in just a moment to tonight's file which shows how your FBI protects American citizens and American homes. Now let's listen in on a brief conversation between Ted Sinclair and his wife. Alice, come over here and watch me sign this check. Boy, what a thrill. It's the final payment on our assured home ownership plan. Does that cancel our mortgage, Ted? Do we own our house free and clear? Right. 
And don't forget, we've also got over $1,000 in our plan's cash fund. All this happened because Ted had an Equitable Society Assured Homeownership Plan. In this plan, a low-cost first mortgage is integrated with life insurance protection. Ted, suppose you tell us how it all worked out. Well, thanks to the life insurance element in this equitable plan, a growing cash fund was created. Each year, it got bigger. Today, it amounts to over $1,000. Now that the mortgage is paid off, I have my choice of continuing the life insurance in force or of drawing out the cash. This cash fund has two other advantages. First... It can be used whenever sickness or unemployment threaten home security. Or it may be employed to cancel a mortgage ahead of schedule. Equitable society records show that many 20-year mortgages have been paid off in approximately 15 years. And don't forget that if Ted had died during the life of this plan, the children and I would have inherited the home free and clear. Last but not least, mortgage interest is only 4%. And there's a liberal allowance to cover title search, lawyer fees, and other closing costs. So, for many reasons, a man may consider himself lucky if his health, age, income, and the location of his home enable him to qualify for an equitable, assured home ownership plan. For full information, see your Equitable Society representative or write care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. <laughs> Now back to the FBI file, The Swampland Fugitive. We in this country are famous throughout the world for our tolerance. This is the land where every man is innocent until proven guilty. Where the police work just as hard to prove a man did not commit a crime as they do to prove he did where the government is composed of men of all political parties, all sections of the country, all races and creeds. Some of that tolerance on the part of the people, however, has been misplaced. Tolerance such as that exhibited by the woman in tonight's case. If this woman were the only one in the Federal Bureau of Investigation's history who had displayed that feeling toward a criminal, this file would not have been chosen for tonight's dramatization. Unfortunately, her attitude is all too widespread. In too many places is a criminal held in regard and even in awe, and invested with all of the finer qualities by his adulators. The truth is that no criminal has any of those qualities in any degree. If he had, he would not have turned to crime, for by its very nature, crime is a business in which the practitioner must be a parasite. The time has now come for you, the people, to wipe out any vestige of that regard in which any criminal is held. For only by a concerted effort on the part of an educated public can your FBI and other law enforcement agencies win the fight they are making for you. The fight against crime. Tonight's file continues as Special Agent Jim Taylor and Sheriff Tom Leonard make their way through the swamps approaching the Jackson cabin. Good morning, here, Jim. Oh, yeah. I don't see his boat around, Sheriff. No. I don't understand that. When I spoke to Mr. Jackson, he said that he'd wait here for us. Well, let's try the house. All right. Better cover me, Tom. Okay. It's open. See anything? No, not from here. Now, let's go in. There isn't anyone here. Let's look around. Well, maybe we ought to take this room first. Tom, look. There's some blood stains. Where, Jim? Right there. Uh-huh. Here's another. There's quite a few more over here. They seem to lead into the next room. Let's take a look in there. Well, I guess the absence of the boat told the story. Mm-hmm. They're gone. Look, there's some blood stains on the bed. Yeah, I see them. That means that Mrs. Jackson was lying when she said Rutledge came here, took some food, and then left in that boat. We know she was lying about the boat, Jim. And now we know the rest was a lie. She never seemed like the type to put up a criminal. I don't understand it. Well, if you don't mind a guess, and it's strictly a guess, I'll try to reconstruct what happened. Well, go ahead. Well, Rutledge probably came in, used his gun to make Mrs. Jackson lie to the posse. When her husband came home, Rutledge forced him to try and take him out of the swamp in his boat. Well, even if that's all true, Jim, it doesn't help us catch him. Yeah. Uh, have you got a description of Mr. Jackson's boat? 
Well, not on paper, but I know it like I know the back of my hand. Good. Well, the first thing to do is send out an alarm on that board. Yeah, I'll call my office and have them do it right away. I guess it's too dark to send up a plane, huh? Well, we don't have one, even if it was light. Sheriff, how many ways are there out of this swamp? Maybe half a hundred, and we got no way at all of knowing which way they'll try to go. Yeah. Well, why don't you make that phone call, Sheriff? Send out the alarm. Okay. And let's get back to your office. We'll work from there. Elizabeth. What is it? I want to talk to you. Go ahead. Why do you want to do this? Why do you want to go away? That don't matter. To me, it does. I'm sick of swamps. You never said nothing to me. You never listened. That's not true. You never took notice, then. You didn't see what was happening. I guess maybe I didn't. Is it too late? What do you mean? I don't want you to go, Elizabeth. Please. I made up my mind. Look, we can both leave the swamps. You've taken me up north to the big cities. Uh, look, you can't go. Uh, you hear me? What's the trouble? Uh, she ain't going with you. Take it easy. I still got this gun. Are we nearly out of the swamps? Yep. Ocean's round next bend. Good. Where do you want he should drop us? As soon as we hit the ocean, we'll keep heading north. You won't get there. Oh, why not? Not enough gas. How much you got? Enough for maybe two more hours. Where'll we be then? Peninsula City. Okay, we'll pull in there. But I've been to Peninsula City. Honey, from there we'll take a train north. See that map of the swamps again, Sheriff? Oh, sure, Jim. Here. I'll slay it out on the desk. Huh? I called everybody in my half of the list, spoke to at least one person who lives in each of the canals that runs off to the left of the creek. No luck? None at all. Well, that could mean that they're still in the swamps. If they are, we won't find them tonight in this fog. Mm. I think I'll try and get a plane from the Coast Guard in the morning. That's a long time to wait, Jim. Yeah, I know. I Especially know. when every minute might be the difference between life and death with a killer like Rutledge. Well, Sheriff, I just thought of something. Yeah, what's that? Gasoline. We haven't checked the marine fuel stations. Maybe they've seen Jackson's boat. Yeah? Yeah. I got a list of the stations right here on my desk. Good. Let's get back to those telephones. I hit pay dirt, Sheriff. Good. Let's look at that map again. Sure. I just finished talking to a man named... George Simpson. Oh, I know George. Oh, well, then you know that he's got the station right here on this island in the middle of the creek. Uh, Will Jackson's a steady customer of George's. Uh, so he said. He also told me that his wife saw Jackson's boat go by the station about an hour ago. On which side? Uh, the left. Uh-huh. That means they'll be headed north when they get out into the ocean. Oh. Uh-huh. Mr. Simpson said that Jackson was in yesterday morning for gas and filled both tanks. Carries 150 gallons. Yeah, that's right, Jim. I know Jackson's boat pretty well. Oh, what kind of an engine has he got? Single screw bolt. He uses about three and a half gallons an hour. Three and a half gallons an hour. I'll give him enough gas for... Oh, let's see. Uh, three and a half gallons, 150 gallons. Thirty-seven and a half hours. Starting uh, yesterday morning at eight, that would give him enough gas until... Eight to eight. And to eight tonight, until... 9.30 tonight. It's 7.45 now. Well, that means that Jackson doesn't have too much gas left. My guess is they didn't stop for any more gas tonight because Rutledge wouldn't let them. Now, they're out in the ocean. Well, they got to be if they went out of that channel, Jim. Uh-huh. Well, I know this part of the ocean coast pretty well. Sheriff, if I'm right about something, we've still got a chance to catch them. <laughs> We're in 
inside the breakwater now. How far is the pier? We were out close to it. Good. I better tell your husband to pull right up to the pier. Will we get on a train right away? Hey, you heading for the pier? Yes, dead ahead. I pull right up to it. What about the train? When will we get on it? Hey, right, there's the pier now. I see it. Somebody keep the bow off. I get it. Yeah, that's okay. Now, I want you to listen to me, both of you. I'm heading down that pier, and I don't want to hear any noise from either one of you. Wait. You understand me? What about me? You're staying here. But you see... Forget what I said. But the train up north. Now, what would I do with a tired old dame like you? Come on. Thanks for the ride. Stand where you are, Rutledge. Huh? Keep your hands up. Who are you? I'm a special agent of the FBI. You're under arrest for attempted murder. Paul Rutledge was convicted in federal court for kidnapping and given a life term to begin after he has served the 25-year sentence from which he was paroled. The knowledge of the coastline which Special Agent Taylor possessed enabled him to decide to head straight for Peninsula City because he knew that that was the first place at which Will Jackson would be able to get marine fuel. He also knew that Jackson would have to stop there because he needed that fuel. And so, another dangerous criminal was apprehended by a special agent of your FBI. However, there was an element present in this case which is present in a great percentage of the files. And that is that Special Agent Taylor would not have been able to make the arrest if it hadn't been for the wholehearted and complete cooperation he received from a local sheriff's office. Cooperation of that kind from every local law enforcement agency throughout the nation has come to be the general rule. And the Federal Bureau of Investigation would like to take this public opportunity to thank those local police and to hope that the splendid feeling of mutual aid which exists now between them and your FBI continues in the future. For along that road lies defeat for the common enemy, the American criminal. In just a moment... We will tell you about next week's exciting case from the files of your FBI. Now a quick summing up of the advantages of the Equitable Assured Home Ownership Plan. Created to protect you against the two greatest dangers in home mortgages. First danger, the death of the breadwinner. In this Equitable Plan, the widow inherits her home free and clear. Second danger, illness or hard times. The Equitable Plan provides a growing cash fund that's always ready when emergencies threaten home security. For full information, get in touch with your Equitable Society representative without delay. Or write care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will dramatize another case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. A case revealing the cunning manipulations of a clever swindler. Its subject, robbery. Its title... The Bogus Bankrupt. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Jerry D. Lewis. Your narrator was William Woodson, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacey Harris. Others in the cast were Jeff Corey, Joe Granby, Tom Holland, Paul McVeigh, and Laura Scott. This is your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Bogus Bankrupt on This 
is your FBI. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.